we like this? Do we like this setup with the lines in the background? This is such a good like neutral backdrop unless I decide to dye my hair black and white <laughs> stripes. I don't think we'll have a problem until that day comes. If that day comes, which it might. Hey guys, so welcome back. <clears throat> so today I'm gonna be dyeing my hair. All you need to be aware of right this second is one, if my face looks really dry, it's because it is. Look, all right here and like up to right here is like my face feels super tight when I go to open it. It feels like it's gonna like just rip completely apart like horror movies, but it surprisingly has not even though my life is one continuous horror movie. Speaking of horror movies and scary things, I asked you guys if you wanted to see a ghost story slash hair dyeing video. So that's what we're going to do. So I have my conditioner. Make sure it's white. You need your dye. Mine is in the bathroom, but trust that I have it. It's Arctic Fox Purple Rain. And then I also have this Pulp Riot Black, which is what I used in the last video. I have my gloves, my little hair dye bin, and my tint brush, and then just a mirror. Um, if you think this is going to stain your face, you could totally put Vaseline around your hairline. However, I'm not going to do that. I like to live life on the edge and my hair dye likes to live on the edge of my face. So we're going to let it do its thing. Stranded in the open, dried out tears of sorrow, lacking all I just added in so much black, but... It's fine. If you mess up, add more conditioner. I do not have it, so whatever this color turns is going on my head. R.I.P. I'll pop my gloves on and we're gonna get into some ghosts. Oh god, I'm so nervous, but also I'm so down for this. Okay. In a lot of these instances, nobody else was with me. And like, I know that sounds really sketch because like, oh, she's making it up. Like, of course, how convenient that nobody else is there. <laughs> like, shut up. Don't come here to watch ghost stories and then tell me that I'm lying, all right? If you're gonna, if you're on that, then go, skedaddle, go and get. So basically, if, if you know me, hey, hi. I also do music. If you don't know, I got my keyboard or my piano, whatever, when I was like, either 11 or like 10 or something and I've just been teaching myself how to play ever since. I would move my keyboard around all the time because it's portable and so at one point I had my keyboard in the room which I shared with my sister when she was still living here and she would tend to throw her clothes everywhere so occasionally they would be on my keyboard and I'd be like stop putting your stuff on my music <laughs> my musical equipment please <laughs> like this is my favorite thing in the world please do not ruin it and at one point, the bobby pin got like lodged in between a few of the keys and I managed to get it out, but now two of my keys don't work ever since that bobby pin. And it doesn't matter how hard like you press down like an actual piano, it will not work. If you slam your fist on it, sometimes it'll work, but like when am I going to do that during a song? So I just avoid that key and if I need that note, I'll edit it in my recording program, you know? So if I'm just like playing just to play, you know, like if I'm not recording anything, I'm just at my house and like trying to write a song or like messing around and like playing, you know, hot crust buns, you know? Sometimes that note will just hit and I could be nowhere near that key. I've had instances where I wasn't even touching my keyboard. I was on my phone writing down lyrics, hovering over my keyboard, but like with this much of a distance and have had that note play. And I genuinely don't know how else to explain that. Like if something was stuck, I don't know. I know technology is weird. So if that doesn't sell it for you, then fine. Let's move on. Just hang in there. Okay, so we have a bay window. So we had like a seating area and I was sitting at the bay window um, and it was nighttime and my parents were sitting outside literally so like my window is right here right it comes out to like right here and then our porch is like 
I mean, obviously outside, but like I could see my parents right from outside, from sitting on the bay window, if that makes any sense. That I feel like I could have worded that better, but you get what you get. So I'm sitting there in the bay window. My parents are sitting outside just like talking and enjoying the night. And I think my sister was in her room. I'm sitting here with my dog and we have a computer room. I don't know if that's still a thing, but we have one. So our computer room is right next to the front door, to the left of the front door, and then our bay window is to the right of the front door. So I can't see the computer room from where I'm sitting, but if I got up from the bay window and moved like a foot back, I could see the computer room. The computer room light was on because my mom had been in there before, and she goes outside and she's sitting with my dad. It's been like a few minutes, and again, I'm sitting with my dog, and then he gets up like somebody called him. I'm like, what the hell? So I get up and I go after him to see what the hell he's doing. And the chair in our computer room is just spinning around, spinning around. Not like at a crazy speed, but like enough where it was clearly like somebody had to have pushed it. And it couldn't have been my dog because I saw him walk into the computer room. He walked in with me. I mean, he walked in a little ahead of me, but it's not like he ran into the chair or anything. It's not like he walked around it. It couldn't have been like if you walk by like a curtain, like it'll, you know, like move a little. It wasn't like that. It was like spinning hard enough for like, it looked like somebody had pushed it. Really don't know. Really don't know how. I really don't know how, but naturally I'm a kid, so. I tell my parents this, they don't believe me, but still just to be safe, I remember them calling a priest. We have had our house blessed a few times in our life, uh, but has that stopped things? Not quite. What else? What else I got? I feel like the majority of the little things that I have experienced have happened in my basement. Uh, more specifically in my basement bathroom and that sounds like a poop joke but like <laughs> it's not. I used to do my hair in my basement bathroom mainly just so that I wouldn't make noise upstairs while my parents were trying to sleep. So my basement bathroom was the place to go. So many times I would feel like I know I'm doing my hair and whatever but I would feel like a whole like hand go like this like feel it there, not like something was like rubbing my shoulder because that I would probably think was just my hair but it was like a grab, like it was firm enough where I was like there's somebody by me and I did it like so many times I have felt that and been like do I turn, do I stay, do I turn, do I stay, do I think it'll leave, is it my mom, is it my dad, is it like a serial killer? A lot of the times we'd be in the basement with the radio on and it would randomly turn off or the channel would change. And we have like the old style radio, so like you have to turn the knob for the channel to change. We did not. Did not turn the knob. Ow! In the basement though, it was always just little things that would be weird, like the light would turn off and nobody would have turned it off. And so we're like... Oh, well, it's probably just like we need to replace the bulb. But then you turn it off, turn it back on, and then it's fine. I don't know. There are a lot of little things that add up and make one big ghost. And I'm sure there are a lot of people watching this that think they could just like debunk these things. And it's like, like I don't think people understand when, when other people talk about experiences that they've had like this. Like how crazy they even feel. I'm basically telling you that a puff of air like touched me but like I know what I felt